Hello, my name is Jonathan Busco, and I'd like to talk to you today about antibiotic stewardship and antibiotic resistance. And I'd like to start by thanking the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for providing both the support material and the imperative to address this issue and also for these slides. And this motto, the Get Smart for Healthcare, No One Antibiotics Work, is really the fundamental piece to this. To my mind, the greatest crisis we have in healthcare right now is antibiotic resistance. We are on the way to where we were in the 1920s when people routinely died of blood poisoning from scratches on their legs, from cellulitis because we did not have antibiotics capable of treating common community acquired infections. And we got to this place where we're at now in part because of evolution. One would expect a, an organism to respond to threats from its environment, and this is true of the bacteria that cause infections. But we also got here because of a lot of very inappropriate prescribing habits of physicians, inappropriate demands for antibiotics by consumers, and inappropriate marketing by pharmaceutical companies. Uh, leading us to, as a healthcare environment, to this belief that antibiotics could be safely and effectively used as placebo to make people feel better, to generate revenue, and to participate in the style of medicine we practice in allopathic medicine, which is the writing of prescriptions. And so, while antibiotics are the most amazing, amazing medications, and in combination with vaccines, have done more prevent morbidity and mortality in the last hundred years than any other medications that are out there. Nonetheless, uh, tragically, they've been so misused that we're now getting ourselves back to a place where we'll have to look to infusing immunoglobulins and doing other techniques that were state of the art before antibiotics were available. So we know that antibiotics are misused in hospitals. They, this adversely affects patients. It creates a public safety risk. We also know that when we use antibiotics appropriately, we improve patient outcomes. People do better when they get the right antibiotics or no antibiotics when they don't need antibiotics, and it saves money. And the World Health Organization has identified this as a global health crisis. We need to address this. Now, this particular slide set focuses on inpatient antibiotic use. Uh, we can talk about outpatient antibiotic use separately because I think that there's tremendous misunderstanding in the outpatient community about antibiotic use and its implications. So we know that up to 50% of the time we give antibiotics in a hospital, they're inappropriate. Uh, either they're the wrong antibiotic or they're not indicated. We give them when they're not needed. We give them after the patient is cured. We give the wrong dosage. Instead of focusing our antibiotic spectrum, we use very broad spectrum agents. And this is a tough one for me. I'm an emergency physician. I, When patients come in really sick, we go broad with the idea being that you want to cover everything and then narrow down the spectrum once we have culture proven knowledge of what the patient has. But if we want to look from a playing the odds perspective, most patients don't need the incredibly broad spectrum that we've used in the last decade. And we've looked at how we can narrow down our first line in all but the sickest patients. And uh, pe you know, people, the, the lay public often will say, I got an antibiotic. Well, what antibiotic? Does it matter? It was an antibiotic. Yes, antibiotics are specific to the, uh, are very specific in terms of what they treat. And the wrong antibiotic does no good. And I have a separate lecture, uh, which I have posted, which basically talks about how we create resistance through evolution and giving antibiotics. But the fact is, is if you give an antibiotic that's not the right antibiotic for the infection a patient has, that that organism is either not susceptible or is resistant, all you're doing is creating other resistant organisms. So we know that C. difficile is a huge problem. We've known that forever. Uh, you give somebody, well, not forever, but 
long enough, as soon as long as we've had antibiotics, we give uh, people antibiotics and uh, you can end up with Clostridium difficile associated disease. And for a long time, we thought it was really specific to the antibiotic uh, that you gave the antibiotic, killed off the good gut flora, C. diff overgrows. But interestingly enough, in the first two weeks of October 2016, a new study is coming come out that shown that if you are admitted to the hospital, even if you don't receive antibiotics, and even if the person that was in your bed before you, in that hospital bed before you, did not have C. difficile, if they received antibiotics, your risk of C. difficile was higher because they were probably asymptomatically spreading spores. Now that's really, really scary. That means that the rooms aren't being cleaned well enough between patients to kill off C. difficile. And it also means that even patients who are asymptomatic can be, can be shedding spores that can infect other people. So we know that there are epidemic strains of C. difficile and that we run into even greater issues when uh, we expose people to antibiotics that they're going to start expressing this strain, that this is going to be their infectious strain. And we know that that strain increases morbidity and mortality in patients. This is not benign. We know that mortality and incidence of C. difficile infection are going way up in the United States. And so particularly mortality associated with this. So this is not inconsequential. We know that there's over a billion dollars in excess costs associated with healthcare associated Clostridia difficile infections. We know that we have an excess burden of almost 10,000 deaths. We know that there are additional hospital acquired cases. We know that there are nursing home cases and the nursing home cases are the most expensive ones and cause the most excessive deaths. So this is just C. difficile, just an infection resulting from antibiotic use that's causing this much of a burden on health. Uh, we know that the uh, epidemic strain is fluoroquinolone resistant, so it's got a selective advantage over other strains because fluoroquinolones have been used so commonly. Uh, although we've gotten a black box warning on them because of the tremendous number of adverse effects in the summer of 2016, black box warning came out. Nonetheless, they are good antibiotics in terms of treating infections, but unfortunately the epidemic C. diff uh, takes that and runs from an evolutionary perspective. So we know that every time you get an antibiotic, you have an increased risk of being colonized or infected with a resistant organism. Again, I explained this elsewhere, but really this comes down to this is how evolution works. There are, will be some bacterial strains that have a, an otherwise useless, in a sense, gene or mutation that makes them antibiotic resistant. And so they have no real advantage in a community until they're exposed to that antibiotic and all of their competitors get killed off, leaving only the resistant organisms. So here we look at um, carbapenems and cephalosporins, and we see these massive infold, uh, massive uh, increased risk of resistance when you're exposed to the antibiotic. And again, it makes sense. You're killing off all of the non-resistant, the susceptible organisms, and leaving only those that had a gene that otherwise was not necessarily giving them any advantage, but now it does, and that's the organism that remains. So I would suggest you go to the CDC website and download this web page and take a look at this article from BMJ from 2010 and you'll see what the patterns of resistance are but basically you give someone antibiotics and they end up with resistant organisms. So we know that resistant organisms in the community means increasing resistant to bacteria in hospitals. We know that we give a lot of vancomycin. The more vancomycin you give, the more resistance you see. 
Same reason. This is how evolution works. You kill off the sensitive or insusceptible organisms, the resistant ones have a competitive advantage, and they survive. We see that we're getting across the board almost all organisms. The more we use a the more we use a drug, the more resistant bacteria we see. And the more that if a patient has a, a, a resistant organism, their mortality goes up. So here we look at Klebsiella pneumonia, either carbapenem resistant or susceptible. And overall mortality and attributable mortality both go up in patients who have resistant Klebsiella pneumoniae. Same is true with MRSA. We know that your mortality risk goes up with MRSA versus being infected with MSSA. Antibiotic use alone causes adverse impacts. These are not benign drugs. They have lots of adverse effects. And so uh, we're talking about uh, almost 150,000 ED visits in one year for adverse events associated with antibiotics. We don't know on the inpatient side, but we know that there are serious adverse events as well. We know that in places where antibiotic stewardship is practiced, we can reduce, reduce C. difficile infection rates. So if we restrict fluoroquinolones, the rates of C. Diff, uh, C. diff infection go down. If we use targeted antibiotic programs where we are, we are very, very thoughtful in using antibiotics and what antibiotics we use, uh, we can decrease nosocomial C. difficile rates as well. And we know that really across the board, if you improve your antibiotic stewardship, your C. diff rates go down. We also know that we can almost eliminate resistance in some cases by being very circumspect and wise in our use of antibiotics. So remember that there aren't labs sitting around full of resistant organisms in hospitals just waiting to be spread. The resistant organisms are on patients and in patients. And when those patients have resistant organisms, that's how they're shed and spread by our fomites, our stethoscopes, our hands, whatever. So by being very thoughtful about how we use antibiotics, we can actually reduce patient level resistance and that reduces the carrier state and the, the infectious state uh, essentially of these patients. And we know this is true for lots of different antibiotics and this is true for lots of different organisms. Interestingly enough, when we're smart about using antibiotics and select the right antibiotics, we also improve our infection cure rates. So if we look at appropriate use, when we look at cure rates, they're much higher when you've got a targeted antimicrobial management program than when you do usual practice and uh, your failure rates are much lower because you're picking the right antibiotics and you're picking a narrower spectrum and you're choosing the right bactericidal versus the right bacteriostatic depending on the patient and the organism. So it's thoughtfulness. It's what clinical medicine is all about. We also save money. Uh, we look really at just about any program that does this saves between a fifth of a million and almost a million dollars in annual savings because antibiotics are not inexpensive. And particularly as we have more and more resistant organisms, the antibiotics that are effective are much more expensive. And if we use them without thinking through what our spectrum can be and whether there are less expensive appropriate alternatives, we spend a lot of money. So this is uh, 14 hospitals and the total cost of their antibiotics. Uh, now, 
there are also public health implications of antibiotic use. Again, resistance doesn't come to be in a lab or on the on the coat sleeve of a doctor or on the bed. Those are bacteria shed by patients. And so if we as physicians are basically creating the evolutionary pressure in a patient to create resistant organisms, we are putting the entire community at risk. And I'll be honest, I, I'm in a community where we have a lot of opiate abuse issues. Nationally, we're in an opiate abuse crisis and people are dying of opiates. Frankly, I see the opiate abuse crisis, abuse crisis as both tragic and a much, much smaller public health crisis than what we're dealing with with antibiotic resistance. And yet, physicians are being routinely censored for their behaviors around opiates, but not routinely censored at the state, uh, censored at the state level um, or at the, even in a lot at the hospital level for their inappropriate use of antibiotics. So we need to really think about what our priorities are as a community. We share antibiotics and they're becoming scarce as we have less and less effective antibiotics for resistance. So we need to maintain good roads. Making more antibiotics, uh, that doesn't fix the potholes in the roads. That just basically is replacing your broken shocks every time you hit the pothole. So we're not doing a good job in the inpatient and the outpatient setting of really showing antibiotic stewardship. I think about uh, something I heard recently as the primary care community was told, we are, you are now being monitored for bronchitis, antibiotic use in bronchitis. And we will, we will tell you when you are inappropriately using antibiotics in bronchitis, primary care providers and emergency physicians stopped diagnosing patients with bronchitis and started calling them pneumonia, exact same disease, a viral illness, but by calling it pneumonia, they didn't get in trouble. And so I had local local individuals saying, wow, I've heard there's a huge outbreak of pneumonia now. All these kids have pneumonia in the schools. And it was really just an excuse to give patients antibiotics. So we need to fix this antibiotic use crisis. And that's what the CDC's Get Smart for Healthcare, No One Antibiotics Program works, uh, work uh, program is. And there's the outpatient Get Smart, No One Antibiotics Work campaign. This is, as I said, an inpatient oriented slide set. Uh, we really want to, in outpatient and inpatient settings, optimize antimicrobial use and make sure that we are giving the right antibiotics for patients with bacterial infections susceptible to those antibiotics using a narrow a spectrum as possible and breeding as little resistance as we can. So we want to improve patient safety. We want to stop C. diff in general and particularly uh, this epidemic for quinolone resistance C. diff and talk about how to solve the antimicrobial use and resistance crisis by encouraging better use of antibiotics. So again, check out the uh, CDC's webpage on this and uh, their Get Smart program. And if you're a clinician, think about your own prescribing habits. Think about the fact that Patients come to you because they want their symptoms controlled. And if you feel like you have to do something for them, treat their symptoms. If it's a viral illness, don't give them an antibiotic. If they've got a sore throat or a cold, don't say, ah, oh, it's just a cold, there's nothing we can do for you. And don't say, it's probably a cold, but it might be sinusitis, so I'll give you antibiotics. Instead say, it's a viral infection, your body has to kill the virus, but we can give you things to make you much more comfortable. That's good medicine, and that's good antibiotic stewardship. So if you're in the class watching this, uh, you can, we'll talk about questions in class. Otherwise, feel free to send me questions through the comments.